to the second video of the Ursina tutorial for beginners. And in this video, we're going to be actually adding a bit of properties to our cube and looking maybe at how to actually create the character. So, uh, if you haven't seen the last video, I recommend you go and check it out. But in the last video, we talked about how to display shapes on the screen and how they work. So, and we also talked about some properties and the entities. So today we're going to be going ahead and actually adding some, some, some sort of properties or more properties to the cube. So first let me run the program real quick and show you what we've got. <clears throat> so this is probably from the last episode, or sorry, <laughs> last video, where we've got the cube displaying. Probably should call it cube uh, after the program runs. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> okay, there we go. Sometimes lags out, but there we go. Uh, we've got that kind of square right now, where we can see, but it's actually a cube. First of all, let's start off by changing the variable's name to cube, just like that. And let's go and close that up. <clears throat> there we go. Now, let's start by actually talking about how to add the textures. So, for example, if I go here to Chrome and maybe I type, let's do a grass texture. So, maybe we'll do the Minecraft grass texture. Texture just like that, and I will just take the top part of it. Now we'll look on how to render different textures later on, or like I guess making the model of the texture. But for now, we could go with something like that. So let's just go ahead and save that. And when you save it, make sure that you go into your or see into your folder or so you have to create a folder. I have a folder here called Ursina Tutorials, where I'm gonna also create another folder. You can do that. Um, and I'll call that Assets. So, there we go, Assets. And now I can put that in. So any images, you can put that in. And to avoid confusion, sometimes it's also a good idea to change the name. So for example, Change that to grass right over here. And now we could save that. And there we go, that's all you would need. So now back to the code. Uh, now it's probably a good idea to open up your folder and check if the, the image is there or not. Now I know it's there, so we got the assets folder and the grass. There we go. Now it's time to actually make the texture. So just like the last time, we would type texture equals. And now we have two options. Option number one, we could write the file name in here, which we're not going to do. Option number two is you can actually store it in a variable. So we'll call that variable grass. Set it equal to load. If it goes load underscore texture, which is the function. And then you type your, your file name. Now, uh, it's not necessary to type like Ursina tutorials and assets and stuff like that. Ursina can find it for you. So all you have to do is do grass. <coughs> now, if your file type is a PNG, just type PNG and the file name. This is why I always recommend changing the file name to something that you recognize. And now you could go ahead and type the name of the variable in here. And if I run that program, as you can see, we've got a fully textured cube or, yeah, cube. Now, some issues that you might have with it is sometimes the image might be a bit big. So, for example, if the image is bigger than this or something, your, your sort of texture might not render. Another problem that you might get is that everything is good, but for some reason, it's just not, not kind of recognized by it. All you have to do in this case is you would go to your 
main main code over here. You would go into the same uh, so code for code file code file over here, and this is this is basically to sort of refresh it, or maybe because it's sort of not saved. Also try to save it. Control S on Sublime Text or just file save like this. So now that we've got that working, let's actually go ahead and do the so control. So we're gonna say from now this is a sort of long import, so uh, you might want to copy paste it. So from Ursina dot fabs dot first underscore First person, first underscore person, underscore controller, just like that. Import, and now you you want to make sure that you type the F in first, and the P in person, and the C in controller in capital letters. So you should have something like this. Now, if we run the program right now, as you can see, nothing still happens. We still see that image. Now, that's because we still haven't assigned, or so if you want to think about it, as run the function and so sort of make the character. So, what you could do is you could type the name of the variable, I'm going to call it player, you can call it subject or whatever you want, equals, and then you would type the first person controller in capital letters like this and as a function. Now if you're on the program, you see you can actually control the player. We have a brand new sort of pink thing in the middle over here. And this is the center of the screen. Now, uh, right right now, you probably can't exit the window. You can press F4 if you're on Windows. And this would exit. Now, we probably need something to exit the window, which would be here in the input function, so define input, I think this is a built-in function, just like that, no, and then over here we'll say key, this, and then we would want to check if the key is escape or quit or whatever, so we're going to say if, so if key equals, and to type escape is so like this, escape, and you could probably say also Q or W or whatever you want, but I just like to go with escape. And I would go. And then you would just type with. That's all you need to do. Now if you're on the program and then I would type escape. There you go, out of the window. Now if you probably recognize me, you fell right through the grass or the sort of cube. So what we need to do to prevent this is we need to give it a collider. Collider basically detects if something is like on it, and then it doesn't allow you allow you to go through or something. So if you do this, say collider equals, and for a for a cube, you probably go with a mesh or a box collider. They're they're probably both the same. Then go with mesh. And another problem you might have is this, where you probably Falling straight up. This is because uh, do that. this is because you probably spawned into or sorry you probably are inside the block and so you just fell off. So what you have to do is player so y equals and then set it to something like five. Should work. And there you go. And actually, really good thing with Ursina is that the play the first play controller actually has the default, uh, like it has a built in sort of movement for the player, so you don't have to define the keys. So, WASD for the movement and spacebar for the thumb, just like that. And there you go, we have rendered our first cube with the texture. Now, now all sides will have the same texture right now. So, the last thing I want to show you right now is how to create a small platform, and from it, we'll start developing into making our own game or our own 3D game, which is gonna be really interesting. So how could you how how could you make that? Well, first of all, we're gonna take all of that, I'm just gonna cut it. Or you could copy it. <laughs> so we're gonna say uh, sorry, four. Now you can do it in multiple ways. Uh, I'm gonna show you a way right now. So four X in 
range. And then try home with home with X, maybe three. Like this. Like four. G in range. And three. So what this basically does is it actually multiplies the multiplies the X. Oops, sorry. <laughs> It multiplies the x and d together so that it multiplies this. Now, if you're on the program, as you can see, it still doesn't work because we need to assign the sort of x and y, x and z value. Now, this is basically a sort of hint for the next for the next uh, video because we're not going to deal with that right now. We have a lot of ways to deal with this, and we're not going to do it now because Today we just want to look at the texture and the first person controller. In the next video, I might do some of the sort of generation or like maybe I guess making a platform to actually make it like a 3D game. And as I told you, from there we can develop and make something like Minecraft or something like that. So with that said, thank you for watching and 